My philosophy on recruiting is that I had to go into homes of the student athlete and sit with the parents and the athlete and talk about what he or she was going to do when they came under my leadership to, to the college academically and athletically. They're going to school, number one, to be a student. And my job was even if I had to go to the West Coast after a Saturday practice, I would take the red eye and get in on Sunday morning and then meet the family, talk to them Sunday, meet the student athlete about Georgetown and then get on the red eye Sunday night and be at practice on Monday. And that was done for Manly, Rella, many people, Brooke Kintz, many people that I recruited out of that area. It was the dedication and relentless mindset that allowed Gags to bring great athletes to Georgetown. He would take those athletes and build them into champions at the Big East, IC4A, and NCAA levels. So our first Big East championship when I was at Georgetown, I, I don't know what place we finished. We didn't do that well, but uh, Mr. Rienzo made sure he came in the corner and said to me, you got great years ahead of your gag with this championship up here in Syracuse, New York. And uh, boy, when you got ready for the Big East, you, you were ready to go to the Super Bowl because the Big East championship meant so much to institutions like Georgetown, like Villanova, St. John's, et cetera, et cetera, Syracuse, right down the list. And you, you better be pumped when you get off the bus, get ready to compete in the Big East championships. You know, I got a funny story. Uh, we had a trip from Georgetown to Syracuse. The bus left us off at the hotel. And uh, actually it was two buses and uh, men and women. And uh, so the next morning I got up and the bus driver said, my bus was taken away because I guess we didn't pay the bills and everything. But here we are during a Big East, getting ready for the Big East championship without a bus to get us back and forth. And here's Gag at the Greyhound station trying to rent buses and so forth. And uh, and, uh, and we had to take a Greyhound back Washington, D.C. Uh, just everything, you know, uh, a trip with the team, getting together, winning, losing. You know, one of the great stories is that... Um, we won the Big East Championship and came down to the mile relay. And unfortunately, uh, UConn was disqualified by passing a, a stick out of the zone on, the, on one of the legs in the mile relay. And uh, we won by about two or three points or else if they were not disqualified, they would have beaten us. So I said to the team at the end, no, 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 don't cheer. No cheer now about us winning, you know, because that's rubbing it in. So we got outside and we went crazy, you know, we cheered and everything outside, not in the, not in the arena and everything. But it, it, it was a great battle of men and women in a tremendous league, the Big East, in track and field. Gags, yeah, your first Big East championship was in 86 in cross country. What did that mean to you and to the program? Well, the uh, winning the Big East Cross Country Championship meant an awful lot to me, but also to the university uh, because it was the first championship in track and field 
uh, for the university from the Big East, and uh, it was just a tremendous win. And uh, I know Mr. Rienzo, the, the athletic director, really, re and he was a former track coach, really, really appreciated winning the Big East championship. Georgetown would win 23 Big East titles with Gags at the helm. The Hoyas would then take that momentum from the Big East championships and ride it into the IC4A championships. The IC4As meant a lot to me, my staff, and Georgetown University. You know, it's schools all over the East. It's a great competition. And what I really loved about the IC4As it, only, it, it was not only runners, and that's the way I coached, and that's the way I recruited. It was a full team. I, I don't know, it's 21 events, but the IC4As had them all. Um, it was really great to see our men and women compete on that level um, and bring home X amount of trophies down the road and so forth. Yes, it was a step up. Big East, right there. And the IC4As, because the number of schools was a tremendous competitive meet. And whenever we won the IC4As, it meant an awful lot to our teams and our university to bring home the trophy. It was wonderful because, it, again, it was teams from all over. I look at the IC4As today, uh, people don't believe in the IC4A teams, coaches. It's nowhere near of the competition that the people from 1983 at Georgetown to the year 2000 competed in. Everything was laid, laid on the line. You, you, you go Big East, ready to go. You go IC4A, ready to go. And then you get yourself ready for the national championships and Gags had his athletes ready for those NCAA championships. He would have 140 All-Americans in a variety of events and relays, as well as seven national champions. Kevin King, national champion, 3,000 meters indoors. In Gags' second year at Georgetown, he coached his first national champion, Kevin King. King ran a tremendous race, outkicking Ed Eyestone from BYU by a split second. Not only did Gags get a national champion quickly at Georgetown, but his team finished fifth at that indoor meet, their highest finish in school history. Mike Starr, national champion. We're going to see a fast finish here, maybe 55 seconds in the last quarter. Well, just watch how relaxed Mike Starr is. He looks like he's jogging. Everybody else is starting to strain a little bit. Someone like Sean O'Neill really has to come flying out now as they've only got 200 yards to go. But Mike Starr has controlled it beautifully. Starr's going to wait. We'll probably see a good last lap out of this man who has possesses great speed. A Fifth Avenue High School winner in the mile. It's Starr. Dede in second. Pettigrew in third. Sean O'Neill from Villanova is fourth. Daryl Berker is coming up from Illinois State on the outside. It's Mike Starr's day. This is Georgia, Georgetown University star. Michael Starr pulling in for his first NCAA championship in the mile. With Mike Starr running away from the competition in 1987, this helped Georgetown get on the podium as a team at the NCAA indoor meet with a third place finish. John Troutman, 1990, 5,000 meters outdoors, national champion. John Troutman, a man with tremendous range, took home a national championship in the 5,000 meters in 1990. He beat John Nuttall, originally from Great Britain, who was running for Iowa State at the time. It was a tactical race, and with 300 to go, Troutman had a look of extreme determination in his eye. He unloaded a kick that broke Nuttall and gave him the national championship. 1991, 4x8, indoor national champion. Holman, Jasper, Kana, Fry. The 1991 NCAA Indoor Championship had a loaded field in the men's 4x800 meter relay. Unlike today's indoor meet with the DMR, the 4x800 meter relay had a trial to make the final. The Georgetown men came prepared to show what they could do, running the fastest time of any team in the prelims. 
In the final, they produced the same result, winning the national championship and giving Gags his first relay championship. But that wasn't the only history made that day. Georgetown finished runner-up as a team, their highest finish in school history. 1992, 800 meters, indoors, Rich Canal. Rich Canal ran a great tactical race in 1992 to win the NCAA indoor 800 meters. Canal waited patiently on the 200 meter bank track and made a powerful move to get himself to the front with under a lap to go. In an extremely tight finish, he outleaned Scott Peters from Florida by .04 seconds to win one of the closest 800 meter national titles in NCAA history. 1992. 1,500 meters outdoor, Steve Holman. Steve Holman had won a national championship as a member of that 4x800 meter relay team in 1991. But he hadn't been able to win one as an individual yet. This day in 1992, he had to go up against many great runners. But one of special note, Bob Kennedy from Indiana. We pick up the race with about 300 meters to go. Brian Hyde of William & Mary has been pushing the pace the entire race. But both Holman and Kennedy are in striking distance. You can see the men are really starting to run down that backstretch, with Kennedy making his move with just under 250 to go. Holman's staying relaxed. He isn't letting Kennedy's move phase him. He is staying very patient and following the race plan that Gags gave him. It looks like it's going to be a tight finish, but with about 50 meters to go, Holman unloads a finishing kick that doesn't even look real. He's making very fast men look like they are jogging. It was a perfect race to show Gag's philosophy on training that he preached to his team every day. Strength plus speed equals a champion. 1997, 800 meters. Brian Woodward. Coming after Woodward, Lanier, one, two, three, as they come down the final turn and into the home stretch. Krummenacker, Woodward now. Woodward moves into the lead. Krummenacker fading. Christensen going with him. Woodward and Christensen. Woodward will be the winner. Christensen gets up for second. Arpazi gets to the line with third. Woodward, who had such a big pen relay series of races, wins his first individual title in the NCAA for coach Frank Gagliano. These next three men were not national champions, but as a collective, they accomplished something even rarer. Andy Downen, Eric O'Brien, and Mark Sivieri all finished in the top eight in the same outdoor 1500 meter national championship in 1996. This was a great representation of the mindset of those Georgetown teams. Everyone was there to compete at the highest level. You can see the accolades Gags and his athletes accomplished from 1983 to 2001. Results like that, they aren't normal. It was the hard work of everyone, the coaching staff and the athletes, never settling for what was easy or convenient. They were trying to be the best they could be every single day. And the results, they speak for themselves. The women's team at Georgetown had tremendous success as well during Gag's tenure as head coach of the entire Georgetown program. Pan Fanaritis coached the women until the late 1980s when Ron Helmer took his place. The 1996 track seasons were one for the record books for the Georgetown women. Jolene Staley won the Indoor Mile National Championship, and her teammate, Maisha Marzell, followed up the outdoor season, winning the 1500 meter National Championship. This was the first and only time in women's NCAA history that in the same year, a school won both the 1500 meters and the Mile National Championship with different athletes. Georgetown would take home two relay national championships, with the first one coming in 1997. That DMR team made up of Maxine Clark, Ayanna Wright, Amy Ross, and a familiar name, Maisha Marzell. They won the first relay championship in Georgetown women's history. The footage you are seeing now is from the 1999 team that took home the national title in the DMR. This team was made up of Autumn Fogg, 
Karen Allen, Katrina DeBoer, and Lisa Roeder. Thank you. 